Hey everybody, it's Begabber coming to you from the trail. Thanks for joining us today. This is Begabber Backpacking, and today I'm out at the Elk River Hiking Trail where Justin and I are going to do a little backpacking trip, a little overnighter. We've got a bunch of new gear we're going to be testing out and some, uh, some cool stuff. So we wanted to get out. It's been a while since I've gotten out on the trail, and a lot of people have been asking when the next trip video was going to be. So here we are. It's going to be a short overnighter. Uh, this is a 15 mile one way trail. So we're actually going to go out a little ways, probably, I don't know, maybe somewhere down in here, six, seven miles in and, uh, and set up. Actually, that's more like uh, eight or nine miles in, but you know, we're starting at this trailhead here. So we're 15 miles in. That's where the start is, 15 miles. And then we're going to follow the trail. And what I've heard is anywhere down through, there's campsites about every mile. So if we decide, you know, here we want to stop, we stop. If we decide here we want to stop, we stop. Uh, I did see a, a pretty nice campsite in this area that somebody had posted up. And I'd heard of another one around here. So we'll just kind of play by ear and see where that leads us. Like I said, we're here at the Elk River Hiking Trail. What do you think, Justin? You ready? I'm ready. So Justin has on the Zimmerbilt Quick Step backpack for this weekend. I've got on my new Appalachian Ultralight backpack and uh, we're gonna go do this. Now I've got this thing overstuffed because it's gonna get down into the uh, upper 30s tonight. And so I have with me for Justin, we've got a 20 degree underground quilt set. And for me, I've got a 20 degree under quilt from Sheltoe and my new zero degree, the custom 950 fill power hammock gear burrow. Uh, I'm gonna be testing out and that's a zero degree. So a little overkill for this trip, but I wanted to get out and test it. So let's go guys, let's do this. This trail is in just outside of Independence, Kansas. So when a lot of people think of Kansas, kind of like, you know, I showed a couple of videos, people don't think of this when they think of Oklahoma. But out here, across this river, is really what people think of when they think of Kansas. Completely flat, a bunch of agricultural. Um, but, you know, we've got this nice river here and we're on this side of the river. But over here, behind us on this side, you've got a bunch of cliffs, and bluffs and that's what's all along the river on this side and there's a lot of good areas that I've seen in some pictures that I'm, I'm really looking forward to getting into on this trail so it's gonna be fun <music> Justin and I have been going down the trail for a little while now. We're a little over two miles into the trail. Uh, we actually went off trail a little bit, saw some cows that were over, got to see them, and then we crossed the creek and got back on the trail. And for the last little bit, we've been walking along this, uh, right along the, the kind of cliffs here. We've gone up them and down them a couple of times, but now we just came to this little, almost amphitheater little area here. 
So we came to this, and I don't know if you can hear it or see it from here, but we'll get closer up and show you all these rocks. Uh, there's a bunch of water dripping off of them, and it's little tiny, tiny waterfalls out there, which is really pretty cool. So we're coming over here, and there's all these drips. There's a pretty good flow over here. Um, but what's really cool is I started hearing something. As we got closer, you can look down into the rocks here, and there's actually a flow of water down in there. Let me tilt this camera and see if I can get it in there a little bit better so you guys can see. Do you guys see that? That's pretty cool. And there's little spots like that all along through here where it cuts in and there's little streams and drips of water. But then as you pan over, right here, there's more that's coming down. And then you've got this tree that's just kind of hanging over the edge. Its roots kind of go along the edge. And uh, I don't know, it's, it's curved and it's really, really cool looking. And then you've got that whole overhang. Well, if you come down here, you can see the moss on the rocks, which is just really nice. That overhang goes over and you can see a little bit of water flowing up there. But we'll get a little bit closer and show you guys what, what we've got. got into this section where there's rock walls on either side and it really reminds me of the Laurel Highlands hiking trail where there's a few spots like this where you're walking between the rocks pretty cool um, this one doesn't last all that long but I'd seen some photos of it and it just kind of reminded me of it now the one thing that doesn't remind me of it is all this trash I mean look at all that that's it's pretty bad um, you know, all along through here, we found spots where there's just old, old trash, old paint cans, old uh, industrial type trash. It was probably just dumped at some point, you know, 50, 60 years ago. And no one, no one came by to take care of it. It's just kind of there. But other than that, I mean, this has really been a very scenic little trail. Uh, even though we're in Kansas, a lot of ups and downs going up and down these bluffs and in and out of these rocks. So it's been a lot of fun. I think Justin's enjoying it. He's up ahead. And, uh, you know, so you come down out of the rocks like we just did. And you're down here along the, the river. But then it, it goes back up in. And here we go back up in between these, these rocks again. And it's just kind of kind of cool. While we're walking down the trail I thought I would show you my water bottle holder so as I was doing the review just the initial look at this backpack I had mentioned that I hadn't put any any of the shoulder holders on here yet and I had a couple of people ask if I could do a video well there's not enough to it to really do a whole video so I thought I would just show you guys while I'm walking uh, what it is I do so here on the shoulder strap, I have two pieces of shock cord. These are 3 16th shock cord. And you can see all I do is I make a loop through the daisy chain and then tie it so that it's tight enough that when it goes over the lip of the bottle here and around the bottle down here, it holds it nice and snug. So I can jump up and down and it doesn't come out. 
And if it does, if you have it so that it's a little bit loose or you have something a little bit heavier, maybe a bigger bottle, you can put a twist in this. So rather than just putting it straight over, put a twist, then put it over, or two twists, and it'll hold it a little bit tighter. So that's really all there is to it. Not enough really there to do a full video, but I figured while I was out here today, and I just put this on last night, I'd show you guys how that's done. It is a beautiful day today. Start off, it wasn't as nice as it is now. Uh, it was about 55 when we started and completely overcast. Since then, the clouds have kind of broke up a little bit and it's been, you know, partly sunny. And, you know, the sun's out right now. It's probably mid 60s and it just, uh, it feels great. It feels great to be out here, you know, sweating just a little bit, not too bad, but it's, it's great. You know, I've been missing, I've been missing getting out on the trail, haven't been out really in a couple of months. I've done a couple of overnighters, but nothing with any real miles, you know, hiking a mile most to get the, uh, the hammock set up and that's about it. So it's good to be out on the trail, getting some, some miles. We've only, you know, so far we've done just under four miles, but it's been good. It's been a lot of fun. Good to be out here with, with Justin, getting him out on the trail again. He took a look, it's been about a year, almost exactly a year. We think it was March of 17 that he was out with me last. So it's been too long. You know, I was gone for a while and the move and everything. So, but you're out here now eating some, eating some beef jerky. I've got the, uh, the cliffs over here on my right hand side. We'll come right up here and take a look. You know, we've been walking along these for a little while. And this is what what we've got here. So the cliffs are here. Got lots of little cracks and crevices where you can get down them if you want. And then out here, it's kind of flatter. Got some streams that run through there that we've seen. But just a, a nice unique area. Unique features. Makes it interesting. So today we got in about seven and a half miles. We, we went down further down the trail, ended up having to backtrack back to uh, find a good spot. We're still a little ways away from water, so I'm gonna have to go down the hill to get some water. It's a little left to four o'clock right now. We've been here for a little while and it took me a little while to find the right trees to hang from. Now that's one of the things, when you're hammock camping, it's not always super easy to find the perfect spot to hang. Now you will see trees all over the place. I mean, if you look through here, there are trees everywhere. I mean, just lots of trees. But which trees do you hang from? So it looks like, well, this one here and the one that's being hung from right there are a pretty good distance apart. But when you start to hang from them, you notice that this one moves quite a bit. So when you have your tarp up above there and you get in, it compresses the two trees and now you have a saggy tarp. So it's important to find the right ones. Now here, we actually are further apart than what I normally go. So you can see where I have Justin set up in the sparrow, we're quite a bit further apart on the trees than what I normally do, but it works out pretty well. I've got him up off of the ground. You just have to go higher. If you're going wider, you have to go higher into the trees. Same with the blackbird that I have set up back here. So I am using the Warbonnet Blackbird tonight. This will be my first trip in it. Um, and as you can see, I have the foot end hung quite a bit higher than the head end, and that is intentional. And you'll see why in the, uh, in the video that I'm gonna do. So I've got Justin set up over here. He's got the underground quilts on there, 20 degree set. He will be toasty warm tonight. And he's got the top cover for the sparrow with the vent up here. So it's a nice little, uh, nice little site we've got here. Got a fire pit down here where we have the bags set up, and um, you know it's going to be a, a good night. We don't we don't have to have a fire, and we probably won't. But there's a, a log here and a little bench right here where we can, you know, arrange gear, sit around, talk, have dinner, and this will be where we cook and do everything else. So I'm gonna finish getting stuff set up, but I just wanted to show you guys our camp setup. 
so I just sent Justin down to uh, to get some water. The lake is just down the hill. Really, if we were to walk over here, actually, let's take a look over and see if we can see over the edge. So right here is the trail. So it goes that direction. And then we went that way about an extra uh, mile or so. But if you look over here, if I can get between these trees and out here without getting everything ripped up. Yeah, there we go. So over here, we're back over to the cliff area. So you can see some cool rock formations right over here. So here we go, some cool rocks. Nice little ravine area right here. Down in. And then these are the cliffs I'm standing on. And we've got the water right out there. Now we definitely aren't to the big part of the lake, but there is water. And so Justin was going down the trail and then there's a spot that gets right down near the water. And he was gonna go down and get some water. I could have just sent him here. Just uh, It's just a little jump, right? I mean, yeah, it's not too bad. <laughs> but that would be cool. Actually down there probably would have been a really nice little campsite area as well would have been would have been kind of cool but i really do like the rock features here like i said before a lot of unique unique stuff uh, you can definitely see even through the woods that that bright neon green of that sparrow that thing man it stands out i love that thing justin didn't want to get out of it I was like, hey, you're in my one of my most comfortable hammocks. He's like, yeah, this thing's awesome. So I think he likes it. I think he's happy. So I had mentioned that I had some new gear out here with me today on this weekend trip. So, of course, the Appalachian Ultralight backpack. This is the Reach Around pack. This is the first trip it's actually been out on with me and uh, rode really well today and felt really good. You know, of course, there was some back sweat because this is a non-breathable material up against your back, but I get that with every backpack, my ULA CVT, every backpack I have. Uh, Justin used the Zimmer Built, which you guys have seen before. Another piece of new gear that I've got out here today. So yesterday I got back from a business trip and waiting for me were a few packages, one of which was uh, from Warren at Cedar Ridge Outdoors, CRO. And he sent me, on the last live, the only live one I've, I've done, uh, on the last live video, we talked about stoves. And so he said he was going to send me the toke stove and the new windscreen pot stand that comes with it. And so he sent me the toke siphon. And so my entire cook kit tonight is tokes. Let me swing this around. So here we have the tokes siphon stove you can see the little burner holes on the inside of it around the lip and because the burner holes are on the inside and not on the outside you can't put anything right on top of it so it needs to have a pot stand and so this is the new pot stand so this goes inside it's got plenty of venting around it and then i've got my tokes 550 milliliter light which goes very nicely right on top and makes a very nice combination their last pot stand was actually just a, a set of cross beams that went on top of this. So they've actually gone in a heavier direction, but this does provide wind protection. So it should work pretty well. And so we'll be trying that out tonight when we cook. But together, that whole package looks pretty nice. So we've got that. And so thank you, Warren. I appreciate you sending that for me to try out. I did mention after uh, the last last well, backpacking trip that Beekeeper and I went on that I was going to switch from the continuous ridge line to something else. And so what that something else is, is a set of stingers. So I went from the continuous ridge line to stingers. Stingers are really just like a little carabiner clip and a wasp kind of combined. So this is another piece of Dutch bling. And then I had him add 20 feet of line to it so that I could get pretty far away from the trees that I wanted to hang from. 
really up to about nine feet, uh, depending on the size of the tree, and be able to hang it. I've got one on either end, and they pull very nicely and uh, work really well. Nothing new on, on this one here, just nice stuff. If we walk over here, I've got the new Warbonnet Blackbird XLC out here. First backpacking trip out with that. And then inside of there, you can see the black and Moroccan blue of my hammock gear, zero degree custom 950 fill power burrow. And then I've got my trusty hammock gear, Cuban fiber up top, not strung out right now. But so that's, uh, that's what I've got out here this weekend that's new. Not a whole lot of new stuff, but you know, every time I come out, it's it's something new to test out and show you guys and, and keep you guys informed on what's going on, what works, what doesn't work, why I like things, why I don't like things, and uh, try and give you as much information as possible. What are you doing over here? Just watching YouTube. You gotta talk loud because it only comes through this mic. Oh, okay. So, what are you doing over here? I'm just on my phone. Just on your phone. Oh, actually, I do have another piece of gear. Uh, so Justin is using the hang time hook, and he's got some YouTube going on on there. And so he's just hanging here, mm -hmm. kind of chilling. What do you think of this hammock? It's very nice. Very nice. Yes, it is. I like this hammock. So uh, you're going to sleep good in this thing. You've got nice quilts on here. And you've got entertainment up here. You've got another battery so you can recharge your phone. Man, this is like luxury. It's like luxury. All right, so I do have something else and I will show you guys. Okay, so I do have something else new. And this was sent to me by Eric Johnson from the Ridgeline Media System, the hang time hook stuff. And this is a new design that he has um, that's kind of cool. It's got two features that are different. So you can see that notch cut out right there in the top. So he has a barrel lock that can go onto your ridge line and you can move that barrel lock and it locks this in place. So if you have a sloped ridge line or you move around a lot and this has moved on you, now he has a way to lock it in place. The second piece is down here. So let's take a look at this. Th what I really like about this is it goes along with what I already have. So on the back of my phone, I have this little disc here and I have a magnetic little holder in my car. So now it actually works with the hang time hook. It is a magnetic holder that holds my phone very secure. I can do it sideways, I can do it whichever way I want. You can see here, it holds it very well. Uh, mine's not centered because of the way I have it set up in my truck, but it works pretty awesome. And I almost forgot, I do have one more piece of new gear as I was getting out some of my um, kitchen stuff. I remembered I had this with me. Now I don't have a sheath for it yet, so I've got this little thing off of here, but let's take this off. So what I have here is a custom made DCWO, that's Deer Creek Wilderness Outfitters, little knife. It's like a, they make one called a bucklore. And this is almost like a mini version of the bucklore. I wanted something a little bit smaller that I could do uh, maybe a neck hang at some point. But this thing is super, super sharp. And it's just, uh, it's comfortable in the hand, works really, really well. And it's just, uh, it's pretty beautiful. Very, very well done.
Hey guys, how's it going? So I'm laying here tonight, just kind of hanging out. Been uh, just watching some some shows I downloaded onto my phone with my hang time hook that's in here. So I just wanted to talk a little bit and let you guys know. Had a really good day today. Uh, felt good out there on the trail. It was nice to finally get out again. It's been a while since I've been out on the trail, and so getting out really felt good and having having my son Justin out here with me was pretty awesome uh, he doesn't come out with me very often none of the kids really come out all that often but when they do come out it's it's pretty cool it's special um, so we had dinner tonight we had the beef stroganoff the mountain house beef stroganoff which is something that he likes I'm not a huge fan of it but uh, it was good it was good enough anyway and then we had some packet gourmet cheesecake with fresh berries and uh, some of the pecan and granola or, uh, graham cracker crumble on top. And that stuff is, is pretty yummy. Uh, definitely made up for the, the beef stroganoff. But anyway, I didn't have any other um, big packet gourmet meals left with me so or in my, in my cabinet. So uh, that's what it was. And it worked. It was fine. No big... No big deal, uh, but today was today was a beautiful day, and it's gonna get down to like 38, 39 tonight. I'm feeling pretty good right now. I asked Justin how he was doing. Said he's super cozy over there in his his setup with the 20 degree UGQ setup. Uh, it's a good good set of quilts he's got over there. Anyway, guys, I'm gonna kind of drift off to sleep here in a little bit and um, I'll see you in the morning. Good morning. So it is uh, about 7.45 this morning. Last night was the time change so really it feels like 6.45. Um, beautiful sunrise coming up behind me over there. Just starting to see the light come up. Uh, I've already got most of my stuff tore down over here. I've got Justin still in his uh, in his hammock setup. He's nice and toasty in there, so I'd let him. I wanted to let him stay toasty while he can. Over here, I have the uh, the coffee going. So water's on right now for coffee right here. I'm gonna get that going, but yeah, you can see through there the sun's starting to come up. It's gonna warm us up a little bit here. Uh, there was a little bit of rain last night, not much, just uh, maybe a half hour of light showers that, that came through, nothing nothing big whatsoever, nothing's wet this morning. It was just kind of uh, a, a short, quick rain. Got down to, I saw 39, it's, it's about that right now. Um, yeah, it wasn't, wasn't too bad. I slept really well and I hope Justin did too, I'm sure he did, but I'm gonna get this coffee going. Need that, need the coffee in the morning, you know that. And I've got some hot chocolate for Justin, so I'm gonna get that stuff, and then uh, we're gonna start tearing down so we can get out of here by around 8.30, 8.45. So it is a, a colder morning. So we've got the jackets on this morning. It's probably around 40 degrees. And we're just trying to stay warm as we get going. I had my coffee this morning, made Justin some hot chocolate, and he had his, uh, his oatmeal. So we actually got up, hit the trail by 8.20 this morning. And uh, you know I think we'll be out in plenty of time to make it back for Ryan's game this afternoon. So we were just kind of talking about Justin's backpack. So he's up here in front of me. I'll turn you around and show you. So he's right there. And he has on that Zimmer built hip belt free backpack. And inside of it, he's got his quilt, his hammock, suspension, extra clothes, tarp, cook set without a stove, water, and then a bunch of other other stuff and so I was just kind of uh, 
joking with him that, you know, that whole thing is pretty much all someone needs to go backpacking if you add a stove, maybe a uh, Sawyer Mini, and some food. I mean, it's pretty, pretty crazy that a weekend or an overnighter can fit into a pack that size. Between miles 12 and 15 on this trail, we passed several man-made built walls. Some of them are, they look very meticulously done, horizontally stacked rock to make really nice walls. Other areas we pass vertically stacked, lined up rocks that form kind of a, a weird, odd looking wall. And then on either, even other places, we come to areas where the rocks have been formed into perfect walls and almost form little rooms with uh, even with little water holes to let the, the water flow between it. Kind of interesting. Justin is just up ahead of me and we are just finishing up this trail. It's been a windy day, so not a lot of recording. Um, we were moving. We've done the six miles in just under two hours. Uh, I let Justin set the pace. He's been up ahead of me the entire time and he's just been setting a, a really nice 3 to 3.2 mile an hour pace a little bit slower over some of the rocky climbs but uh for the most part really really good pace it was awesome to get out here with him this weekend and um, you know I appreciate you guys coming along so let's take a look since we're coming back up to the board exactly where we went so here's the start we started here, we came down through, past all of this. So we passed mile nine, and a friend of mine had said at like 8.8, .8, somewhere in here, there was a good camp. We kept going, we got down here, and uh, still hadn't really found anything. We thought kind of where this X is might be a good camp, so we were down in here, and we ended up not really liking the area was kind of exposed I was afraid of the uh, the winds and stuff and so we climbed back we actually went off trail and went back up to the trail here and came back and found a little camp right in here and that's where we camped so we had six miles to get out this morning and uh, Justin really rocketed it next time we come out I'd like to get to where we're along the lake and I can actually see the lake because we kept looking you know some of these areas here actually look pretty big when you're looking out over them but when you compare this to this, um, I think this would be a whole lot cooler to be around. So what are your thoughts, Justin? Did you have fun? Uh, yeah, it was pretty fun. It wasn't too hard, and it was pretty good. Cool. Well, guys, thanks for joining us today, or this weekend, actually. Um, and I will see you guys down the trail. We actually got up and hit the trail by 8.20. <laughs> I just had a snot sickle dripping. <laughs>